This is a series of tutorials providing an introduction to using frames and foundations. The idea is to give you a really good overview so you have a good understanding of everything that is required to make full and effective use of the two frameworks uh, together and to enable you also to get on and write your own applications. We have separated the videos into uh, short uh, versions on different topics so that you can move between videos really easily and you can go to the video that is most appropriate for what you want to find out. The aim of this tutorial is to give you an introduction to the architecture of an app written using Morpheus Frames and the Foundations. We'll cover all the essential aspects of an example app from business objects to UI controls. We'll do this by looking at the project structure and also use the Form Explorer tool to help us. This way, you'll also get to see how the Form Explorer tool contributes to a productive development environment. This tutorial is for any developer starting out with Frames and Foundations. Specifically, it's for Java developers, although the same concepts can be easily translated to a .NET environment. It is meant to be an introduction to the concepts, so we won't drill down too far into the code. You'll be able to see that in later videos. We assume you know enough about uh, enterprise Java technologies and Eclipse. Instructions are available on our website to get you started on doing this by yourself. You should also have seen the introduction to Frames and Foundations tutorial. If you want to have a go at this yourself, you'll also need the plugins installed. So without further ado, let's get going. Let's look at the overall project setup. We have these three projects loaded into Eclipse. One, the demo application that we will focus the majority of our time on. Two, the web service project that provides the interface between the UI and the back end. And three, the workspace project that provides a highly configurable application delivery environment. Now, although we need all three of these projects to be loaded, we only need to see the first one in detail. The project itself has three key folders under a common package name, in this case Morphis. Firstly, common. These items include wrappers for database types and store procedures and all of our menu definitions, items that are required throughout the entirety uh, of the uh, application. Two forms. These are the application modules and three reports. These are the Jasper report modules. So let's start by looking under the common folder. The first file you can see here is storedprocedures.java. This class provides a wrapper for each database store procedure and or function. If your database has packages, you'd have one class per package that again has one wrapper method per function. You'll see from the code that the method is quite straightforward. It builds a data command, adds parameters, executes and returns the result. Really straightforward. When a specific type is needed, for example, a procedure returns a set of records, then the DB types folder here includes a basic definition of each row type that we need. Now let's look at the menus. Within this folder, we will have an XML file for each screen menu, including the workspace menu, but not including context menus. These are specific to each UI component. Let's have a look at that one. Here you can see that we have a simple hierarchical menu with the first menu entry here performing the action call form. This is a specific action tied into the framework. This means launch the application module called EMP, but we're able to have multiple levels of module as we need to. Take a look at this one that has three levels launching three different modules. Yeah, each menu needs to have its own config file. This very simply associates each menu with a controller when uh, we need to associate a menu item with a specific method call. Now, let's take a look at the forms folder. Here we have three modules also known as forms or tasks, depending on how you want to talk about them. I'll call them tasks. Each task has its own folder. Let's look at the EMP task or EMP task. Inside this folder, we have folders for the model, views, controllers, and services. We also have some files that provide key items used within the task, or key ingredients. The task class which just brings all of this together and provides programmatic aspect, uh, access to each of the architectural layers. The struct XML file provides the definition of how items and data blocks 
uh, relate to each other in terms of types and order and also how windows and panels relate to each other. This is often important where developers need to programmatically navigate between such items. The LOV's XML file contains definitions of what we call list of values. There's a similar concept in Oracle Forms and this is where a query uh, can result in a number of results with different columns although we may only want to store one of the column values. We may store more than one. Note the definition is purely visual as the background query is defined elsewhere in what we call a record group, hence the reference to the record group here. The alerts XML file contains definitions of pop-up messages used within this task and of course any other task that also inherits from it. The config XML file provides links between the different parts of the tasks. Let's now take a look at the model definition. A model consists of a set of business objects, their row adapters, value set definitions, also called record groups, a model configuration file, and a model class file that provides accessors to each constituent part. This particular task has three business objects, depth, emp, and or, that's short for departments, employees, orders. Each of these has its own config file, which defines what data the object contains and how it gets it and an adapter, which represents a row of data or a single record. A value set is the back end of a list of values. Each one defines the data fields and the query to retrieve the data. Actually, it can be dynamic, including an SQL query, but it could also be static if you just wanted to define your own data set there. The services folder contains functions that are generally pure business logic or shared functionality between controllers. For example, let's look at this method, um, which is short for calculate the number of employees. This has been migrated uh, from an Oracle Forms application using Morpheus Transformer, and it returns a number following a database query. You can even see the previous PL SQL code for reference if you needed to do it during the transformation stage. Uh, sometimes it is useful to separate service methods into packages, and this is often needed when migrating. So some, uh, some service methods may be grouped together into such packages, and so we'd have one class per package, uh, including uh, one method per function within that package, if we really want to keep that structure. The controller layer contains all the logic associated to triggers, either from the UI or from the model. Each task has its own controller, in this case the imp form controller. This contains event handling logic that applies to the whole task. Have a look at the documentation online for a list of all the task events that are available. Each business object then has its own controller, containing event handling logic specific to itself. Again, have a look at the documentation online for a full list of available triggers. Each defined menu also has its own controller containing the logic that is executed for each menu item. In this case, we have the file menu and a pop-up menu, hence two menu controllers. Now let's look at the UI folder views. And of course, remember we are using frames here uh, as part of the, the foundation setup. Very simply, each screen has its own window component and each canvas has its own panel component, and a panel must sit inside a window to be used. So all of these are in Morphis's XVC format, which is our technology agnostic definition language. In this example, we have been working on relational layouts rather than just fixed layouts, hence we've got two versions of the same panel. You'll also see a themed folder which enables us to add any specific styling to this particular task rather than to the whole application. And finally, each pop-up menu also has its own XVC definition. Navigating through all of this structure can be a bit more difficult, especially when there are many, many business objects and many UI components. This is one of the reasons we built the Form Explorer tool. You can open this by right-clicking on the file uh, in Project Explorer and selecting Open Form. Now you can start by typing the name of the task you wish to open and select it from the underneath, uh, in the list underneath like so. The Form Explorer provides a straightforward way to narrow down the components of the task 
and also includes a set of code generation wizards that we will cover in another tutorial. You can explore the component tree and right click to see what options are available to you for each component. For example, double clicking on this business object opens the adapter class. Now the Form Explorer's toolbar also has a number of options for you. We can search for components within a task or search for another task within the project. We can reload the structure of the task in the Form Explorer after we've made changes, for example in the code. We can import objects from other tasks. We can automatically check if the form structure is correct so we can validate it. We can even create a new block, a list of values, a new visual layout uh, or event handler. All of these uh, options are available in the Form Explorer and we'll go into more depth in how to go ahead using the Form Explorer in another tutorial.